If your child hasn't been evaluated, here are some things your child needs to know. Keep in mind that it's never too early to talk to your child about their challenges and provide him with an explanation about what may be going on. Your child knows that he is struggling. So by learning more about why he may be having challenges in certain areas, it will help him with his self-esteem. First, pick a time and place where there are no distractions and talk to her about the issues that she's facing, like waiting her turn, having difficulty sitting still, saying or doing things without thinking about the consequences, problems completing tasks, difficulty keeping track of belongings, or forgetting to turn in homework. Next, you're going to talk to your child about how differences in the brain may be creating these specific issues for him. You may want to provide an example, like some people have differences in how their brain works. It's kind of like some people's vision is fuzzy, so they wear glasses because it helps them see more clearly. We're going to the doctor to see if your brain works a little differently so we can find the right tools to help your brain with the specific issues that you're having trouble with. Also, explain to your child that the doctor is going to ask her questions to find out why she's having trouble focusing. And this will help the doctor to find ways to help her at home, school, and socially. Your child needs to know that you're all working as a team as you go through this journey together. Next, you'll want to be ready to talk about ADHD after the diagnosis. You can do that by making sure you're knowledgeable about ADHD. You can learn more about it by taking parent training, attending webinars, visiting reputable science-based websites like the CDC, NIMH, or CHAD for information and facts and you can speak to your doctor. You may also want to pick up a few books, especially those for children, so that you can use those during your conversations. Be sure to keep the information appropriate for your child's age. An older child can understand more about how his brain functions than younger children. For younger children, you can talk about behaviors like inattention, impulsivity, and forgetfulness. For all children, the goal is to offer reassurance that the challenges that they're facing are not who she is. It is something that she has. It can be difficult to know what to say when discussing ADHD with your child. Keep in mind that children with ADHD hear negative messages throughout their day from adults, friends, and other people. These messages erode their confidence in accomplishing tasks, and this leads to poor self-esteem. So you'll want to talk to your child about his or her strengths. Help your child to recognize what she does well and provide her with a list of her positive qualities. It's helpful to give your child an explanation about what's going on. So try this framework and adapt it to your conversation. What you're experiencing is very normal for a child who has ADHD. You're a regular child, you just have something else that makes you have a lot of new and exciting ideas, and sometimes they're all at once. You can be full of energy that you just don't know what to do with sometimes. This can be a great thing, but sometimes it makes it harder for you to finish your schoolwork or be a good friend. ADHD won't go away, but we're a team. You, me, your teachers, and your doctors. And we're working together to make things better at home and school. Keep in mind though that ADHD is not an excuse for bad behavior, but we'll work together to fix the problems that cause you to get into trouble. So what does your middle school child need to know? In middle school, the demands on students increase, but skills in social and emotional growth might lag. Middle schoolers hear and experience a greater amount of negative messages from their peers and adults throughout their day. Not only are they exposed at school, but then again at home through social, gaming, and mass media. Many can hold it together and act their chronological age when they're in social situations or at school where they have a lot to lose. And then they default to their developmental age in the safety and unconditional love of home. Many students this age find socializing easier when they aren't face to face. They prefer to text or play online games as a way to communicate those important social messages. Many parents complain that their kids spend an enormous amount of time on the computer or gaming system and not enough on outside activities. Efforts should be made to help kids in this age group to balance activities equally, not forsaking one environment for another. 
Screen time provides them with a way to practice interacting socially without as much anxiety as interacting face-to-face -face with peers. In middle school, it's much more about how ADHD affects your child socially and emotionally. Talk to your child about their strengths and talents. Then include the feelings that go along with the symptoms that they display, such as frustration, feeling dumb or like a failure, and sadness about social missteps. Describe how ADHD symptoms can make navigating school responsibilities and the social environment extremely difficult. But if you work together, you can solve problems and come up with ways to make things easier. Keep in mind that some children might not want help with social challenges, so you'll have to step back and listen and ask them if they'd like you to help. If they're willing, you can then guide them through finding solutions on their own. So what does your high school child need to know? Teenagers will want less and less the manager and director parent and more the collaborator and consultant parent when they are maneuvering through adolescence. True neurological hardwiring doesn't occur by chance at age 18. Most young adults are not hardwired until age 24 or 25. This can be difficult because their ADHD might make it also difficult for them to concede that they're not ready like their same age peers for certain privileges and opportunities. The most important and difficult part of parenting a teen with ADHD is to maintain your good and stable relationship with them. This can be done by talking about your teen's strengths and what he or she does well and what that affords. Mirroring or paraphrasing what they ask of you for clarity is important and having your concern equally addressed is paramount to this as well. Be sure to talk about how ADHD may impact their attentiveness when driving a car, being influenced by peers, the ability to establish daily routines, using time management tools to help manage some executive function deficits, learning how to become his or her own advocate, and breaking down the steps necessary to find a job. And finally, we're gonna talk about how to talk to your child about your own ADHD. For many years, ADHD was thought of only as a children's condition. Many health professionals currently in practice were trained during a time when they were taught that ADHD is something that kids would outgrow. We know this is not true. ADHD is a neurobiological disorder that affects individuals across the lifespan. Adults with ADHD can benefit by identifying the areas of their life that are most impaired by their ADHD and then seeking treatment to address them. Adults with ADHD may benefit from treatment strategies similar to those used to treat ADHD in children, particularly medication and learning to structure their environment. It can be stressful when both a parent and a child have ADHD. As parents, we often put our needs last, but one of the most important things that you can do is get more educated about how ADHD affects you, seek treatment, and find support at local child support group meetings or through an online community. Be as transparent as possible with your child about your diagnosis and use humor and honesty when the inevitable challenges occur. By showing your child that you also have similar challenges and that you also need to use tools such as checklists and reminders to address these issues, the more they'll understand and cooperate with you as you work together to address their challenges. ADHD is a lifespan disorder. Part of your role is to teach them to find solutions that work for them and to advocate for themselves.